2019, an international maths and science study, which comes out every four years, saw South Africa ranking 55 out of 58 countries, with only 37% and 28% of grade five learners demonstrating that they had acquired the basic mathematical knowledge and basic science knowledge, respectively. The study is an assessment of the mathematics and science knowledge of learners around the world. While these stats are worrisome, a lot of work is being done by various institutions and individuals to ensure the improvement of the South African education system and landscape. One such person is the University of Cape Town's Vice Chancellor, Professor Mamocheti Mpakeng. Uh, she has been named the winner of the inaugural Africa Education Medal, which was uh, founded to recognize the work of those change makers who are transforming African education. So for more on educational issues now, we welcome Professor Professor Peking, what a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you for your time and, and congratulations on the award that you, you received. I mean, that is a huge achievement. Thank you very much, Leanne, and thank you and good morning to you and Sakina. I suppose the one thing, um, it, 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 it's great to, to win awards and work tirelessly towards uh, educating South Africa and South Africans. However, when we see things coming like the, something like this coming out, where, I mean, just statistics showing that 37% and 28% of grade five learners demonstrate that they, they, they only have basic skills. I mean, that is, that, that is a very scary and worrisome statistic that, that I must say I'm, I'm a bit concerned about. How do you feel about numbers like this and where we're at currently? I mean, numbers like this are depressing, Lian, but as depressing as they are, we, we have to put context to them because you have to look at where we come from. So as much as the numbers are scary, we have actually improved almost fourfold since, you know, since the last team's results. So um, if you look at that, it's a huge improvement for mathematics. Um, is it enough? And maybe not. Maybe we should have uh, improved a hundredfold um, or fiftyfold. But but what I'm saying is that there is improvement. So I don't want to underestimate or undermine or undervalue the work that's been done already. It's a huge job to undo where we come from. I mean, of course, we've been at the last end, and always people need to remember this. As we improve, other countries improve as well. And so being at the bottom doesn't necessarily mean we are not improving. We are improving, but it's relative to all the other countries. So there's improvement, but it's not enough. And we've got to start asking, we, we've been asking actually, why is there not, no improvement and what needs to be done? And of course, this challenge is attended to from different perspectives. Some of us look at it from pre-service teacher education, what do we need to do in terms of training teachers, new teachers who go into the system to teach mathematics. Some look at uh, in-service teacher education. What do we need to do to ensure that the teachers who are already in service are expert in what they're doing? And others look at learners and they're trying to improve learner performance in school right now. And I think all of those approaches are important because whilst I am very interested in pre-service teacher education, um, uh, it, the, the learners who are in class right now, cannot wait for those teachers to be produced or to come out and complete and come and teach them. They have teachers right now. So all these multifaceted approaches are important. And there are people who are looking at learner materials, um, learning and teaching materials, learning support materials, and so on. And, and I think all of those approaches are important. And the private sector has been a huge supporter of this work. Yeah, which is, which is encouraging and we want to see that happening. But there's also a lot of talk in terms of our, our actual, um, the teachers and those that are guiding, because obviously we need to look to, to the lower grades before we even think about the university level and, and mathematics being taken forward and science being taken forward. And these, these skills are integral in every aspect. We need students that are excelling in science and maths. I mean, these are our future doctors, our engineers, our uh, mechanics. I mean, you name it, you know, these are the, these are important skills that will take us forward. But many saying that, you know, perhaps we need to look even deeper into the, into the, the learning of all of this and the skills that our teachers have. Are they doing a good enough job 
to keep students and learners interested in maths and teaching it the way it should be taught? That, that's a good question. And that's why teacher education is key in all the approaches that we're doing. Frankly speaking, I mean, many teachers who are teaching mathematics at lower levels, at primary school level, many of them were not trained as specialized mathematics teachers. They, because they're at primary school, the way we work in South Africa, they have to teach all the subjects. And who knows, perhaps some of them were not so, were not so interested in mathematics. Remember that um, the, the team's analysis that you're looking at focus on or that you, that data that you, produce, you were you were sharing is focused on the grade four and grade five uh, teams and and, and 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 many of those teachers haven't haven't um, maybe haven't done mathematics when they were at, at, at university they did all the subjects it's very recent actually that universities have been coming into groups with teaching or training a uh, primary mathematics teachers and 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 the training of the primary mathematics teachers at university came in as a result of the initiative that was funded by the first rand foundation that i championed and we set up chairs of mathematics um, at foundation phase to get foundation phase focused on and you may ask well why start now that project started in 2008 and that work has taken root now but you may ask why only in 2008 well before this the, before the colleges uh, were closed down previously primary uh, teachers in general were trained in colleges of education and during minister kada asma's time he closed down the colleges mm -hmm. and teachers had to be trained at university but universities never knew how to train mathem mathematics foundation phase or primary school mathematics teachers and so the expertise was not there and the focus remember that universities focus not only on teaching but on research so it was high level and and focusing on 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 secondary school teaching and learning so so in a way there's there's sort of repair work because when decisions are made to close colleges, um, there are many questions that were not asked. Who's going to train primary school teachers? Now universities are coming, come, have come to grips with it. Rhodes University, Vet University, where the chairs were located, uh, Professor Venkat and Professor Graven did this foundation work. And that work is growing, just skilling primary school mathematics teachers yeah. who, who never loved mathematics. So, so I think there's an improvement in terms of how we see, how we train mathematics teachers, even the questions that we ask, and even, even the work that we do to ensure that teachers are better trained because that it doesn't help to, to blame the teachers once they are in service and, and the results are not good. Yeah. When we did not focus on making sure that we produce teachers who are better trained and can do a good job when they get into schools. Yeah, I mean, Professor, you you're touching on such an important issue and I'm, and I'm so glad that you, you know, you're giving us a background perspective of where we're at because yes, we want to blame and we want to talk to the fact that, you know, things are not looking good. They're really not looking good. In fact, I mean, I'm, I'm reading just a couple of statistics coming out. Yeah, I quoted, obviously, as you also mentioned, this is a grade five and grade four survey that came out and we're talking to maths at that level, but we go even further and the, the statistics currently show that only 30% of all matrix uh, that write take mathematics. And of the 30% matrix students that take maths, only half of them pass maths. And the rest yes. are, in a way, made to drop down to maths literacy. And, and that seems to be a, a lot of the way in grade 10, a lot of kids are, are told, listen, we don't want to drop your pass rate, so just go down to maths literacy and then you'll be fine. But I mean, 15% of everybody coming out of matric just passes maths. I mean, that is a number that we got to be worried about. Alarm bells have got to be going off. And I mean, surely we need to start rectifying things and, and we need to go right back to the basics. Absolutely. There's three reasons for that. And, and I, I don't want to um, be sitting here and defending anyone. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, the nature of mathematics is the first thing that we need to understand. You see, with mathematics, if you miss grade 5 mathematics, grade 10 and grade 12 mathematics become difficult, Leah. It is not like biology or history. 
It is connected. So the concept of number is going to help you understand the concept of fraction. The con those concepts are going to help you understand uh, uh, algebraic expressions and algebraic e equations. It's going to help you understand factorization. If you don't get them, you don't get the remainder theorem. You don't get uh, uh, calculus. You lost. You don't get quadratic equations. So they are connected, and and that's the that's the challenge. So when learners come into high school and they have gaps at primary school maths, what it does is that it creates a other backlog. You need a very expert teacher who can diagnose where is the problem, how do we pick it up, and then make sure that the learners take it up. Many of our teachers are not skilled in that. What is it? Of course, teacher education has to make sure of that. But, but the issue is that many learners get to grade nine and or grade 10 and they've got so many gaps mm -hmm. that it is not easy to plug them and what that's why for us at uct when we started the uct online high school one of the things that we included in the pedagogy online pedagogy is that we we don't proceed to the next concept if the learners haven't understood the previous concept because that's key for mathematics so, so, so that's the first thing. The second one is that, um, you know, um, mathematics literacy, as, as important as quantitative literacy is, has served, uh, mathematics literacy has served as a detractor, sort of um, both for learners, for schools and for parents. When a child is having a little challenge with mathematics, um, teachers say, oh no, he can't do this. Um, instead of persevering and getting um, getting to solve the problem, the decision most teachers would say, well, why don't we just do mathematical literacy? And I know how many times mm. I have had to intervene yeah. for many young people at schools to go to school with the parents and, and the teachers want the child to change to say, but this problem is not insolvable. And now those children are now at university, they're doing data science, they're doing economics, they're doing very well. So, so but in a place where there isn't intervention, the schools because they want good results, they just say, go to math literacy, and we want to go on only with those who can succeed. Mm. And so, so you have this, you know, this, and, and this is a need for schools to be seen to perform, to be performing better. And so they can do it at the expense of the learners, because if they don't, they suffer the consequences. Mm. So we've got to look at this carefully to be able to attend to the challenge, no doubt, We've got to increase the number of learners who take mathematics. And again, finally, let me say, Leanne, we also need to start saying who chooses to teach, who chooses to be a teacher. Mm. That's a big issue. Teaching is no longer so valued in our society. And that's why most of the time I stand proudly and say to young people, you want to be who I am today, what I am today. What you do not know is my foundation is teaching. I love teaching and I started as a teacher. I've taught at primary, at secondary, at college. And the reason I can do what I do at university and I understand teaching in the way that I do is because I taught. So you cannot short circuit the learning process or think you can just jump to the top. So we've got to say, recruit our best students to go into teaching. To go into teaching because they love it and they want to make a change and to make a contribution. And not say, because you can't do this and that, go to teaching. And it's good to see some students who do actual science or BSc mathematics and statistics, and they complete and they say, I want to do teaching. And we see them at UCT, I've seen them at VETS, I've seen them in different universities, the students that I support who choose to go into teaching, not because they've got nothing else to do, but because they love mathematics and they want to make a difference with it. And I think that's the last thing that I would say we need to change, but we can't wait for that. We've got to, the other things we We've got to deal with, as I say, multifaceted approach to solving this problem is important. Oh, Prof, I could listen to you all day because you speak such truth. I mean, this is this is what we need to hear. This is the honest and open truth about where we are and the problem that is associated with 
the product that we're pushing out because, you know, there's this, this quote, and I, and I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to steal a bit of our time, but I'm, I'm going to leave a final word with you. But there's this quote that's jumping out at me, and, and, and it goes like this, and I know you know it very well. Destroying any nation does not require the use of atomic bombs or the use of long-range missiles. It only requires lowering the quality of education and allowing cheating in the examinations by students. Patients die at the hands of such doctors. Buildings collapse at the hands of such engineers. Money is lost at the hands of such economists and accountants. Humanity dies at the hands of such religious scholars. Justice is lost at the hands of such judges. The collapse of education is the collapse of a nation. And the sooner we realize this, the sooner we will come to terms with the fact that education is the most important aspect that we have to turn this country and this continent around. And yet I sometimes feel we do not take it seriously enough. We cannot have numbers like this. We cannot have an education system where we are losing students, not because they don't have the ability to learn, is that we are not giving them the opportunities because we're not having qualified people that are there to teach them to do the job properly because we're dropping levels. That's my view on this. And I'm gonna leave it to you to just wrap this up for us, this conversation. Your, your view is absolutely correct. I would add to say, learners also have to take uh, responsibility. Students have agency. The idea that they just have to wait, wait for a teacher is not good enough. Because, I mean, we've seen how many learners out there just don't take their learning seriously. And I want to say today to young people, take your education seriously. You will need it one day. And to parents, don't outsource your parenting to teachers or to anyone. Take a strong step. Be clear about why education is key in your family. Set high standards. Hold your children accountable to them, both in terms of their behavior and in terms of their learning and what they produce, because we will never be able to succeed if we outsource the behavior of our children to politicians, to teachers, and to other people out there. We've got to take this on. We've got agency. We are not passive actors in this thing. We can do something both learners and parents. Thanks, Leah. Such a pleasure talking to you, Prof. Thank you. Thanks so much for your time talking to us. Um, I mean, we didn't even touch on your qualifications, but I don't think we need to. They speak for themselves. You're amazing at what you do. And we just, again, congratulate you on winning this uh, Africa Education Medal. And we know why. We know why. Thank you again for joining us here on the program. That, of course, was Professor uh, Mamokheti Pakeng. She's the Vice Chancellor at UCT. Let's get into our news at the top of the hour. It's just gone eight o'clock.